guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today. Thanks for tuning back in, much appreciated. And actually, I'm just heading back from Table Rock Lake right now. I had a on the water lesson, I had a few minutes to do today's uh, uh, video. I just wanted to go over a couple things. And today, video that I want to give is sort of a little departure from the norm. Just wanted to share a story with you guys. It's been a while since I've done that. And I just want to share the uh, story of the coldest day uh, in Bassmaster tournament history uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, that I, you know, I fished in that tournament. I was going to tell you about that. If anybody knows a colder day, let me know because I've been fishing for over 30 years on bass and uh, I have not seen one yet. And I, don't, I can't remember one ever held before. And uh, this was the story of the 1991 Bassmaster Invitational at Grand Lake, Oklahoma, in November. And when you're thinking about it in terms of the coldest tournament Bassmaster ever had, that's not that's not like the first place you would think is as Oklahoma in November. But um, this in this particular tournament, uh, we had one of those uh, once in a century Arctic fronts come in. Uh, actually, it was the day before the tournament that came in. And uh, what happened on this particular tournament? I'll just sort of skip right to the first morning of the tournament. Uh, first day of the tournament, Bassmaster Invitational 1991, uh, we got up that morning and uh, the temperature was uh, 7 degrees when, when we woke up that morning. And we were launching at Shangri-La Resort, their mid-lake part of Grand Lake, if you guys ever been there. And at the time, my mom and dad had a trailer there, so I launched about uh, probably four or five miles away and I, I ran over in 7 degree weather for four or five miles in the dark which was an experience, I'll tell you that right now. But that when everybody was launching there at uh, Shangri-La and all the ramps where there were uh, multiple people launching at, I, was, I had a private ramp, so there was, I was the only one there. As soon as the first person went in, the ramps iced up and nobody could get in. Everybody was sliding into the lake. I remember Byron Velvick's truck slid into the lake in that tournament. So they were having to get you know, tow trucks to pull boats out and trying to get the ramp salted. Uh, and it was, so it was a mess, you know, seven degrees. So it, I'm surprised they're even having the tournament at this point. So everybody gets staged out there at seven degrees. But the thing that was really bad about it on top of the seven degrees is we had a sustained hard north wind 25 to 35 miles an hour all day long. Never, it never let up any. So the wind chill factors were well below zero all day long. It was unbelievable. The tournament, we had a high that day of 21. So you factor into that, and that was in the afternoon just for a little bit. So most of the day, it was in the, the uh, low to mid teens most all day long and uh, blowing 25 to 35 miles an hour. So I don't know if you guys have ever fished in a situation like that, but it it is fishing sort of becomes secondary just to survive in a deal like that i remember we got out there and uh you know i had lots of clothes on and i had my uh motorcycle helmet on and i never took it off all day i fished with my motorcycle helmet on because that provided me a little bit extra warmth and you know it allowed me to fish you know without just completely being miserable you know i even had the visor almost halfway down on the thing but in gloves, the whole thing. And the deal about that, the fish were biting a little bit. Um, the, the, the fish, it's like when you catch one, you couldn't put them on a measuring board because they'd stick to the board immediately. And all, the, all of our storage compartments were frozen over. As soon as you opened up your, your live well to put a fish in there, it froze solid. So I had to take a screwdriver and pry my live well open tearing the carpet off it every time I got in and out of the live well. And my partner, he was having a rough day. He could not concentrate, he couldn't fish. And after about 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning, he just said, I can't do it. He said, I can't take it anymore. And he basically stood back there all day long and he didn't fish, he just jumped up and down on the back deck. I said, but man, dude, I need to take you back in. He said, no, I'll just keep fishing. And he just stood back there jumping up and down most of the day. But it was, I mean, all day long it was like that. You know, like I said, 25 to 
25 mile an hour wind, you know, low to mid teens. And I, I fished in a lot of cold weather before, guys. I, you know, I do a lot of on the water lessons in the middle of the winter. I, I know what it's like to fish in cold, cold weather. But the combination of the humidity and the wind and the temperature made this absolutely the most brutal day I've ever spent on the water. It, the humidity was so high that there was a thick fog in the air all day long. So you had this freezing fog on top of everything else. I've never seen anything like it in Oklahoma. You know, it's, especially in November, it was a freak deal. But anyway, Ron Shuffield wound up winning that tournament with, he, he had 50 some pounds for three days. The fishing, the fishing were biting. I, I wound up, I did decent in the tournament. I can't remember, but I, you know, made a good check in the tournament, lost a couple big ones. And, uh, but it, the second day it warmed up a little bit more. It got up to, you know, 30, 32 degrees the second day. But that first day of the tournament was one for the record book. So anyway, just wanted to share that story with you guys. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to y'all soon. See you.